This is the video where we talk about the shutter button of your iPhone. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would the shutter button need a specific video? I can just press the shutter like this and a photo is taken, right? Well, yes, that is true. But it turns out that there are many more things you might not know about the shutter button that are really useful to know. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five unique ways to release the shutter button of your iPhone. But before we even get into those five techniques I'm going to share with you, just take a look at this beautiful frame right here. You'll see that I've framed up the beautiful sunset over the sea. And what's really interesting here is that we have these clouds that are originating from the sun in all the different directions. So in this photo, the sun is my focal point. It's the brightest part of the image. But I have these clouds that just kind of originate in every possible direction from the sun. And that creates a really unique, really beautiful photo. Now, when you're shooting sunsets, clouds are your best friend. They can also be your worst enemy. So if you don't get lucky, you might not get a sunset at all. But if you get the right configuration of clouds, you can get a truly unique, truly special sunset photo. And each one of these photos is unique. And what's more, it actually keeps changing. So over the course of this video, you'll see how the sunset will develop in front of our eyes. And the photos that we'll take throughout the video won't be the same. They'll be different from each other. And that's because we have such beautiful clouds to work with. Again, those clouds are not static. They're moving all the time. And as the clouds are moving, the photo is changing. So no two sunset photos are the same if you have beautiful clouds like this. But now, let's get back to the shutter button. So the first way you can release the shutter of the iPhone is the obvious way. You simply tap on the shutter button here on the left and a photo is taken. Now it's important that you do this lightly. You don't want the tap of the shutter to actually move the iPhone or shake it in any way because that shake will result in a blurry photo. So tap it gently, just lightly with the tip of your finger like this, and then a photo is taken. But we're not done with the shutter button. It also has some hidden features that might not be immediately apparent. So if I tap and hold my finger on the shutter, you'll see that a video starts to be recorded. And at the top of the screen, you'll see the seconds counting, saying how far I am in the video. As I release my finger, the video stops. So this is what you do if you're in the photo mode of the camera and you want to grab a quick video. Simply tap and hold your finger on the shutter button and you'll see that the video is being taken. As soon as I let that finger go, the video stops. Now, what if you start shooting a video like I just showed you, but you decide you want to make a longer video? Well, that's not a problem. Tap and hold on the shutter button and then you'll see that there's this lock icon at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So if I drag my finger down while still holding it on the screen like this, you'll see that now the shutter button is locked in place and the video is still being captured. So if you want to do a longer video that you launch from the photos section of the camera app, then this is how you can do it. You'll also notice at the bottom left hand corner, I now have a smaller shutter button. So if I tap my finger there, I can actually take a photo while a video is being recorded. So as I tap there, you don't really see anything happening, but every time I tap that smaller shutter button, a photo is also saved to the Photos app of my iPhone. So this way, I can actually take a beautiful photo while I'm still recording the video. Once I'm done with the video recording, all I have to do is tap the big red shutter button again, and the video is no longer being recorded. And finally, there's one more thing hidden behind that shutter button. As I said, it's not that simple. If I tap and drag my finger up towards the top of the screen like this, you'll see that photos start being taken very quickly. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that I've now captured like 80 photos or so in a matter of seconds. And this is how you activate the burst mode of your iPhone. So burst mode is a really useful feature when you're taking action photos or when there's movement in the scene. It's a great technique that we'll cover in a separate video, but for now, I just wanted to show you how to activate it. Now, if you're holding your iPhone in a different orientation than the one I'm showing you, then you wanna make sure you drag that shutter button towards the little image icon. So the preview of the most recent image you've taken, you wanna drag that shutter towards that. And if that's what you do, the burst mode will be activated. 
And this is how you work with the shutter button of your iPhone. Okay, option number two. That is using the volume buttons on the side of your iPhone. So the side of your iPhone has volume up and volume down buttons. And it turns out that you can also use these buttons as the shutter release. Let me show you how they work. If I quickly tap any one of these buttons like this, you'll see that the photo is taken. And this works with either the volume up or the volume down button. If I simply press the button once, a photo is immediately taken and that's it. But now, let me show you what happens if I tap and hold the volume up button. You'll see that as I'm holding the button down, the burst mode is once again activated and the iPhone starts to quickly take a lot of photos. Now, if this isn't happening for you for any reason, the chances are you need to enable this in settings. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how to find this setting, but under the camera settings of your iPhone, you can enable this feature which will allow you to activate burst mode using the volume up button if you simply hold it down like this. And finally, if you hold down the volume down button, that is going to activate a video. So as I'm holding my finger down, you'll see that the video is being captured and the moment I release my finger, the video capture stops. And while we're here talking about the shutter button, look at that sunset. That is absolutely incredible. Just minutes later, we have an entirely different pattern of clouds, and the photos I can take now are actually dramatically different from the photos I was taking just a few minutes ago. And I expect this to keep happening. So as that sound goes lower and lower, the clouds will keep moving, the scene will keep changing, and that's what makes it so special to me. No two sunsets are the same, and within minutes, you get an entirely different shot, even though I'm standing right here with my iPhone on a tripod. Now, using the volume buttons on the side of your iPhone is really convenient if you're used to holding your iPhone like this with four corners. I personally don't hold the iPhone like that, and that's why this method of releasing the shutter isn't that useful to me. But if you really like holding your iPhone like a traditional camera, then this is how you can get a traditional shutter feel. However, I don't really recommend using this because as you press down that shutter, or that volume button, I should say, the iPhone is going to move a little bit. And that movement can be enough to cause slightly blurry photos. And that's why I don't like to hold my iPhone with four corners like this, even though it might be convenient. Now, let's move on to option number three. And that is using any wired headphones that also have volume buttons. For example, these white headphones came with my iPhone when I first bought it. And while I don't really use them for audio, I do use them for photography. So let me plug these headphones in and let me show you how to use them. Now before I hit the shutter again, let's talk about that composition. Just a couple of minutes later, we're once again looking at something entirely different. I'll switch to my 2X, my telephoto lens, and you'll see that I'm now much closer. And also, I'm going to reframe the shot. And I'm going to reframe it in such a way where I'm centering the composition around this circle of light that I have in the sky. So you'll notice that the sun is kind of hiding behind that cloud, but around it, we have this circle of orange light that kind of surrounds it more to the right and to the top part of the image. And I can make that circle of light be a really prominent feature in this composition. So now that I'm happy with the composition, I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter, this time using the volume up and volume down buttons on these Apple AirBuds. Now, it doesn't matter which button I press, either volume up or volume down will do the trick and a photo will be taken. However, using the AirBuds, unfortunately, I cannot capture a video or I cannot shoot a burst mode. So if I tap and hold any of the volume buttons, a single photo is taken but I cannot start a video or I cannot shoot a burst mode photo. Okay, let's move on to option number four. But before we do, it looks like once again, the composition in front of our eyes has changed and it only took a couple of minutes. I still can't believe what I'm seeing, even though I've seen it so many times before. The sky is changing by the minute and every minute you get an entirely different photo. 
It's absolutely wonderful. So while I like what I'm seeing, and honestly, any shot is pretty in these circumstances, I think I'd like to try a broader view. So I'm gonna see what happens if I go to my 1x view, and that is indeed beautiful, but I think even broader could work here. So let me switch to my 0.5, my ultra wide, and look at that. Now I have this entire broad view with all the clouds and all the interest in the sky. And if I reframe the shot just a little bit, and I'm gonna be careful to keep the horizon straight, but if I reframe the shot like this, now I can get even more of that beautiful sky in the frame. You'll see there's someone coming in from the left side and it looks, kind of looks like they're walking sideways because of this effect. So I'm gonna quickly grab a shot of that. But what I wanted to show you actually was how to activate the self timer of the iPhone. There are really two situations where it comes in handy. One is if you're on a tripod and if you don't want to move the iPhone at all by pressing the shutter, then you can activate the self timer and then you typically use three seconds. You press the shutter and three seconds later, a photo is taken and any vibration that you might cause by touching the screen of your iPhone will be hidden that way. Or the other reason why you might want to consider using a timer is if you want to get in the shot yourself. So let's try that out. To activate the timer, I'm going to open the hidden menu. So I'm gonna tap on this arrow on the right-hand side of the screen. And here I'll select timer. So that's the icon that kind of looks like a clock. And I'm going to select 10 seconds and I'll close the hidden menu. And now I'll press the shutter and within 10 seconds, I'll try to run inside the frame and position myself as the subject of the photo. All right, let's go. So I'm going to carefully position myself so that I'm right in between the sun and the iPhone. And right around now, I think a photo is being taken. So let me walk back to my iPhone and let's see what kind of photo I was able to capture. All right, that looks pretty epic. Ideally, I would be covering the sun, but I kind of like this too, where the sun is on my shoulder. I think that looks pretty beautiful too. And now before the sun disappears behind the horizon, I'll try to do this again. So I'll hit the shutter button. The 10 second countdown is on. So I'll get in the right position, right between the sun and the iPhone. And right around now, a photo should be taken. So I'll go back and see what kind of result I got. Hopefully I got it right this time and I'll be standing right in front of the sun. So let me open up the recent photo and look at that. That looks absolutely amazing. I managed to position myself exactly where I wanted to be and I'm really happy with the photo that I got. So if you ever want to be the subject of your own iPhone photos, then this is how you can do it. And finally, option number five is using a Bluetooth shutter release. And I happen to have one right here in my pocket. So it's a tiny little device like this. You can get these on Amazon for a few bucks. It doesn't really matter which brand you get. As far as I know, they're all the same. They even all look the same. But what this device allows you to do is essentially trigger the shutter button of your iPhone remotely. But before that can happen, I need to pair the shutter with my iPhone using Bluetooth connection. So in order to do that, I'm going to quickly go to the settings of my iPhone. And from here, I'm going to open Bluetooth. And under Bluetooth, if I also hit the shutter button on the device, the device should come up. And you can see it's called AB Shutter 3. So that's the one I'm going to select. And now it says that I have a pairing request. So I'll make sure I hit pair. And now it says that AB Shredder 3 is connected. So let's go back to the camera app and let's see if that works. So now if I press the shutter, a photo is indeed taken. So now that the shutter button is connected, let's look at that framing again. Let me switch to my 0.5, my ultra wide. Now you'll see that we've lost that sun. It is now below the horizon. So the sunset is over, but that doesn't mean that all the photo opportunities are over. Now I'm lucky to live pretty far north and at a higher latitude, 
the sunset lasts longer. So it takes longer time for the sun to go down. And also, once it's below the horizon, it takes a longer time for all the light to go away. Because of that, I can keep taking photos for maybe another half an hour or so, as long as I still have some interest in those clouds. Now, speaking of interest in those clouds, it looks like something interesting is developing there. If you look at the frame more carefully now, you'll see that it's kind of making this wing shape where we have some wings going to the right and wings going to the left. And this is partially an artifact of the ultra wide lens. So it tends to distort space in some strange ways. But when it comes to clouds, that can actually look really pleasing. And I think that's what we have here. So I have this kind of a wing shape in the sky and that looks really amazing. And while I like what I'm seeing, I'd like to get just a little bit closer because the top sections of the frame are still kind of empty. So I want to emphasize those wings more, but I don't want too much space around them. So what can I do? One option would be to switch over to my 1x, but if I do that, now I'm so much closer and I get such a different view that all the wings are essentially gone. So that won't work. I'll go back to my 0.5x, my ultra wide. And while I have those wings, they're not as prominent as I'd like them to be. But there is another thing I can do to improve this. So I'm gonna open the hidden menu again. And from here, I'm gonna select aspect ratio. So that's the four by three button. And I'm gonna change that from four by three to 16 by nine. And now look at that. I'll still need to reframe the shot just a little bit and I'll make sure the horizon is straight. So I'm gonna use the grid line to align the horizon perfectly. And that looks like good framing to me. Now, as I was doing these adjustments, as I was reframing the shot, the wings are almost gone, but I still think it's a good framing. So I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna press the shutter using the Bluetooth shutter release. And you can see it works just like that. I press the button and a photo is taken. Okay, so now you know how a Bluetooth shutter release works, but when would you want to use it? Well, it's actually the same two use cases that we had for the self-timer. So one option is if you're shooting on a tripod like I am, and if you don't want to move the iPhone at all when you're pressing the shutter, that's when this comes in handy. Or once again, if you want to get in the frame yourself. So remember with the self-timer, I was only capturing one shot and I was kind of struggling to position myself in the frame. Well, with a Bluetooth shutter, I can take as many shots as I want. So what I'm gonna do is walk into the frame. And as I am doing this, I'm going to be taking a couple of photos. So I'm pretending to just be walking here as if I was a regular person. And every now and then I'm taking a shot. Now, once again, I don't see what I'm capturing, but I'm hoping that at least some of these shots should hopefully work out. So let me walk back to the iPhone and let's see what I captured. Okay, so I'm back at the iPhone and I'm going to open the Photos app and here I can see the images that I just took. Now, some are better than others, but actually this worked out surprisingly well. I have these beautiful silhouettes of me against this incredible night sky. It looks absolutely stunning and Actually, I'm really surprised about how well this turned out. I was hoping that I would maybe get one image or so, but it looks like I have several that are really, really interesting. And of course, I could only do something like this because I have the Bluetooth shutter release. And finally, if you're an Apple Watch user, there is one more thing you can do. And that is using the camera app on your Apple Watch to remotely trigger the shutter of your iPhone. I personally don't wear an Apple Watch, so unfortunately I can't show this to you. But the way this works is that on your Apple Watch, you can press the shutter to take a photo on the iPhone, and you can even preview what the photo looks like. So you'll get a small viewfinder directly on your watch. That way you can actually see what the resulting photo is going to look like. However, there is a problem because you don't want to take a whole bunch of photos where you're doing this that's not gonna look good, especially if you have a lot of photos like that. So if you are gonna be using the shutter release on your Apple Watch, I strongly recommend that you combine that with the three second timer. That way you can press the shutter on your Apple Watch, pose for three seconds, and only then a photo will be taken.
All right, so now we really are done with the shutter button. But before we go, let's take one last look at the viewfinder. And you'll see that the scene is still stunning, but now it kind of looks like all the action has shifted more to the right. So now it's the left third of the image that's kind of empty for me. And those beautiful clouds that I have at the top, they've all shifted a little bit to the right. So that means just one thing, I need to reframe again. So for this last shot, I'm also going to turn off the 16 by nine. So I'm gonna tap on 16 by nine again, and I'll change it back to four by three. And now I'm back in my original four by three aspect ratio. So I'll close the hidden menu. And now let me reframe the shot for what's going to be our last composition of the day. And now that I'm happy with my framing, I'm gonna once again take a shot using the Bluetooth shutter release. Now it is getting dark here, and in low light situations, it's particularly important that I don't touch the screen of my iPhone as I'm taking a shot. So if I want the sharpest image possible, I don't wanna be hitting the screen of my iPhone directly to take a shot. But with the Bluetooth shutter release, I'm getting a steady, sharp shot. And look at that image. It looks absolutely stunning. It almost feels like we have these clouds that are all originating from the same point in the center of the frame where the sun used to be. And we have these clouds that are kind of going in all different directions from that point. And that looks just amazing. And this makes for an incredible ending to what was a spectacular sunset. I'm so happy we got to capture these images. And I'm also really happy that we were able to do that while I was explaining to you five unique ways to release the shutter of your iPhone. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.